Hey guys and welcome back. One of the things that comes up a lot about the car we're going to talk about today is why does it even exist? Essentially the front end of a Saab 99 and the rear end of a 900 Saloon, it wasn't exactly a new and groundbreaking design for Saab. Although it did keep a small car in the range being that it was smaller than the Saab 900 and with the Saab 9000 coming out the same year. So let's talk about the Saab 90 and welcome back to the classic Saab guy. It's been said that one of the things that attracted customers to the Saab 90 was the fact that it didn't have a four-door variant and maintained a kind of coupe two-door appeal. Some have also said that the 90 perhaps provided a bit of sentimentality for the owners of its predecessor, the Saab 99, that entered production the same year the 90 entered the market, and that the 90 somehow comfortably bridged the transition between the 99 and the 900. Indeed, Saab described the 90 in its brochures as a direct descendant of the 99, that they had taken all the characteristics that made the 99 popular and refined them in the 90. That being said, the 90 was indeed a safe and well-built car. All manufacturing of the model took place solely at the Saab Valmet plant in Finland, and it proved to be reasonably popular and managing to accrue humble sales during its short run from 1984 to 1987. From the B pillar forward, the 90 shared every detail of the 99. Aside from a different tilt in the steering column and an improved starter motor, the nose, the bonnet, dashboard, fascia, most of the interior trim and the carburetted engine, albeit with some minor improvements, all appeared to be from the Saab 99. But it was when you got into the back seat and stowed away luggage in the trunk that the changes became obvious with increased legroom and stowage capacity. The 90 could also take more fuel in its slightly larger tank, and economy was improved with a closer geared 5-speed transmission on certain models. A limited edition model that was all white with extra trim was made for the Finnish market. Only 10 were made and are known as Lomiko, which roughly translates from Finnish as Little Weasel, but the car is known as Snow Weasel in most Scandinavian countries. After some minor improvements came to the 90 in 1986, such as cosmetic treatment, a modified Zen of carburetor and upgrades to the suspension, Saab conceded to diminishing sales and production of the 90 ended during the summer of 1987. There is some debate online as to the build quality of the Saab 90 and that there were perhaps higher standards of manufacturing at the Saab Valmet plant in Finland. It has been widely documented that certain models of both the Saab 90 and the Saab 99 received better quality of paint and rust proofing than that of its manufacturing counterparts in Sweden. And indeed today many examples of the 90 and the 99 in the light blue colour have proven to be highly rust resistant compared to other Saab variants manufactured at the same time. It is an ongoing debate, which I would like to explore further, so I will be coming back to it in a future episode. So there you go guys, there's my short and brief overview of the Saab 90. I'm sure we'll come back to it in a future episode. But for now, I'll see you next time on the Classic Saab Guy, and do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel.